Hey you guys, it's Nathan back with another video. Today I'm going to show you how to remove any background in Photoscape X. Photoscape X is a completely free photo editing software for PC and for Mac. And this is how I remove any kind of background in a photo. So here's a photo of myself in my old office setup. And it worked out great to remove this background because it's a pretty simple background. And I was just able to go through and remove it. Now, unfortunately, it's not like a one click, oh, select subject like in Photoshop, but this is a free option that works extremely well. So let me back up to the beginning to show you how to do this for yourself. So to begin, you'll need to get Photoscape X. You can check the description if you are going to get Photoscape X and get that downloaded and installed. When you open it up, you've got this main page where it shows all your different options and things that they teach you in Photoscape X. There's the viewer. Whoopsie. Uh, there's a viewer where you can look at your to view different projects or different photos or things that you're working on. So there's all sorts of neat stuff on there. There's your editor where you can edit and move things around. Like here's the thumbnail for this video, which I'm adjusting and making just perfect. But then there is this cutout tab. And in the cutout tab, when you click over to here, you can drop an image in and begin cutting out the background or anything that you want to cut out of the image. So uh, let me show you here. You'll see basically nothing in here when you first start. And you'll find whatever image you're working on, the image that you want to do. And then you'll drop the image in. So let me grab the image here. Where do I have it stored? I downloaded it. Oh, yes. So I got it here. Uh, click on it. And then I'm going to just drop it right into the cutout tab. So then we drop the image in and we're ready to roll. So what you'll want to do in the cutout tab is understand these three brushes or uh, ways to remove uh, the background. There's the matching eraser, the lasso, and the brush tool. So explain the easiest one first the brush tool you have add and subtract either you're adding a selection like you're saying hey I'm selecting this to remove it or you're hitting subtract which is say actually I messed up and I'm going to brush this back in and deselect that part of the image and when you save it out at the end you'll save it with a nice transparency so you can put it into a project into a PowerPoint uh, post it somewhere or put it into another uh, image like I did here for the thumbnail where I have everything set up and I can move it around and adjust it just so so that's great so you've got the brush tool you can go and manually brush out parts of the image to remove it now that is one of the slowest processes to remove the background but it is one way to do it and it's one way to be super precise because you can zoom way in and make sure you get right around a certain area and if you accidentally go too far in you can restore it by putting it back. What's nice is they also have over here in the corner, and we'll get to all the rest of it later, is they do have uh, some different sections here where you're able to change what the selected area looks like. So before, it was just, oh, it's now erased, so it looks just like the background of the software. Instead, you can get like a red selection, green, blue or even completely black completely white completely red so you can really see what you've selected there's also an invert mask button where if you were to select something and then you decide hey I actually want to select the total opposite of what I've already selected I can hit invert mask right here and it will completely flip it and completely change it to the opposite there's also a couple neat things that we'll touch on towards the end, which is anti-alias and trim transparent pixels. Um, we'll take a look at those, and it really helps to get things even better. But that's the brush tool. Um, one little thing as well, you can adjust the sizes of the brush, and you can even click in here and the, adjust the shape of the brush. So if you need a certain shape, you can do that as well. So very neat there. The lasso tool is just as it sounds. You can select, draw a selection have that selected in here and then when it's selected um, you can actually just hit invert mask and it flips the entire selection around and you just get that section that you wanted uh, so that can be a one way to just kind of quickly cut out an image and get just what you want but yeah you have to draw that full selection there 
The last one is Magic Eraser, which is one of the best tools. It's not perfect, but it works pretty well for a free software. Magic Eraser basically is the software saying, hey, select a color that you want to remove from the image, and we'll try to select as much as we can. So if you click it, you can click it, and it erased uh, some. It erased some. I'll change this to red so we can, or green so we can really see what's selected here. But you can actually adjust this tolerance slider and adjust it higher and higher. And it can actually go and select more and more of similar colors from that one first selection. So you can actually, if you have a simple backdrop and you're careful with that selection tool, not to bring it up too high, not to bring it too low, but just to the right amount, you can actually uh, have the majority of the image selected to have it cut out without even having to go into some of these other tools. So we have the magic eraser, we clicked one time, and we got the majority of the wall removed from what it looked before to what it is now. We can click on the door. Whoa, and that really adjusted too much. But I can slide this tolerance slider down more so it just gets, you know, the door. So that's a lot better. And then some of these other sections, it's kind of messy in this corner. It's not as easy to remove that just with the Magic Erase tool. You can try, but it might not be super great. Uh, once again, trying to move that tolerance slider around, trying to get just certain sections. But at some point, you might need to go in and manually remove certain areas. That's where I usually jump to the brush tool. So I'm going to apply what I've already selected as uh, ready to remove. Go to the brush tool and just remove the other stuff that it didn't get right away. So up in this corner, remove some of that. Over here, whoopsie. Over here, I can remove some of this. And we're just getting to the point where we have it all removed. And... Uh, what's really nice is that when you get towards the end of your selection and you're like, okay, I really want to just make sure I get it just right. Like if you're doing a quick project, you could call this done. But if you wanted to be really precise with it, you can turn off this anti-alias smooth edges. And then it really does a good job of showing... Um, it really does a good job of showing all the individual pixels that are still left. So you could... Uh, select like a totally blue background and you can really or green background and you can really see the areas that are still left here where you're like oh wow I didn't even notice there was this little line of the door that was left or you can say oh I didn't notice that up by my hair here oh there's a few random strands that I could just remove um, or you could see hey you know there's a section here right by my hair that is kind of the wall but there's kind of just a gap there happens all the time especially with hair that just goes all over the place um, but you can go in here to the magic eraser select that color and just remove a little bit of that color in there depends on how precise you want to be but you definitely can go as precise as you want in photoscape x so that's really cool uh, going back to the brush i'm just going to take a little time and remove some of this extra stuff around the corners when you get to certain areas, you kind of have to wonder, oh, do I want to leave this or keep this? A lot of it's trial by error, but if you, what I usually do is I often just cut out a little bit too much uh, on purpose, so then I can brush it back in later. So that's just kind of a tip for me uh, that I've learned over the years. Oh, yes. But if you guys have any other questions, definitely check out my other videos. I've made like it's almost 90 videos on Photoscape X now. I probably am done making videos on Photoscape X, but I keep finding interesting new things to teach or new ways to teach it better. So if you're appreciating the content, definitely leave a like on this video and leave a comment if you have any questions about Photoscape X. I'm just going down here and just getting a little bit here, a little bit there. Uh, hair is always going to be something that you got to really look at pretty closely. Um, but... If you take your time, you can really get it looking good. All right, all right. So I think I've done a fair job here. It's just so nice when you're able to select the solid colors and be able to zoom in and see, oh, wow, this part still isn't perfect. Still got to work on this one area a little bit more. Oh, it looks like it erased some of my neck right there in the very corner. It's not terrible. And honestly, when you turn 
the anti-alias smooth edges back on, usually it all disappears. But if you want to be super precise, that's one thing that a dedicated photo editing software can do. Um, you can really make it look perfect. So you guys, I really hope this video was helpful for you. I'm just going to show you the saving process. Uh, you guys can you know, spend as long as you want cutting out these different sections and areas. Um, oh, yes. All right, very good. So then the saving process here. So you've got it saved. You've selected what you want. You've checked it and everything. You, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go over, click Save, and you want to make sure you save this out as a PNG file. That means it's going to have that transparency in there. So, yes. Yeah, so just going to do cut out Nathan. All right, so we're going to hit Save there. And then it saves it out. And then it's going to give me the option to show in Explorer. I can open that up, open up this show in Explorer, and then it's just going to reopen the image in a new tab. And that is your finished product there. You can then go put that into your editor and you can work on it however you'd like in your next thumbnail, in your next presentation, in your next project. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.